Alright, what's up y'all? It's like a fan here. As you can see by the title of today's video, we got five out versus four out one in pick and roll. Now the five out team is the first team you saw on the left right there. They're 18 and 0. Our team is 42 and 4 and we run four out one in. Now, as you guys know, if you've been with the channel, I have the finisher, the finisher and defense pie chart. Now, real quick, I'm gonna get into the lineup intros and we'll just explain some things that I want to get off my chest with this pro-am stuff. Now, the lineups, they have a pure play, pure lock, pure stretch, two two-way sharps. Our lineup is Cook on the play sharp, Kitchen on the two-way, Supreme on a peer, Kobe on a two-way sharp as well, and then me on a finisher defender. Now, one mistype and like typo that I had was I had Stealth on that picture right there was the peer sharp. It's actually, his name is Supreme. He's the dude shooting the three-pointer on the, on the wing right there, and he's our wing spot up with the peer sharp. Now, that is one thing I like about having this peer sharp too, is just the ability to shoot from that wing. Now, real quick before I get into any, any like, you know, gameplay uh, or game plan details. I want to explain. I want to explain the problems with this pro am matchmaking. Why I haven't? Why I haven't been making pro am vids recently either. The thing is, bro, is that when you hit pro bronze on this like team pro am matchmaking stuff, it literally just disables you from finding matchups in the first place at all. So what this leaves you with the options of is this private matchmaking game that we're playing right now where people challenge us and you know want us to play against them and I think this is my favorite way of doing it I just hope you guys enjoy this as well I know it can get a little cloudy and just you know like if I would have shown the real pregame intros we both had to reset our teams because of the matchmaking errors and like problems that you run into and we're both like basically zero and zero or like five and oh so it just would have been a whack intro so this is these these may be the things that i have to do when doing videos like this is just kind of show credentials of like previous teams that we've both been on but like the frustrating thing about that is it's just it doesn't feel as authentic but the, don't blame me y'all blame 2k because this is the thing when you hit pro bronze you literally cannot find a game it's as simple as that and you saw i was elite silver like our team was elite silver in that first screenshot that was from earlier in the year i've made a pro -in video i i've made one pro -in video in the last three months and the thing about it is i was starting the year off doing them weekly every single sunday and the problem is like i said just the activity of this game mode, I wish 2K would realize it, bro, because I would play Pro-Am so much more if the matchmaking stuff worked. We could find high competition games within like minutes and they'd just be great content. But the fact of the matter is the only way to get games is just to reset every single time you win like 10 or 15 games and you just play like, you know, honestly, like trash teams that really have no experience or any any place, you know, running against you. And then even if you play against a team that's like 6-0, and it's probably not worth, like, you know, recording. And you don't, you can't play elite teams unless you're playing the tournaments. And at the end of the day, I'm probably going to just do that. We're probably just going to run the tournaments and we'll get into that eventually if there's no fix to the matchmaking problems. But we need to kind of get our lineup straight and like, you know, get our chemistry down. So anyway, after my what probably three or four minute rant <laughs> let me explain our game plan on offense and defense now on offense they're running this two three where it's going to be real tough to beat now honestly what we should have been doing i think that supreme should have been probably spotting up a little bit deeper just to make it a little bit easier for us to get that like wing three pointer off but at the end of the day it's just tough bro i mean they were pinching that they're pinching that two three really tough when cook would drive or not so not so much drive but move toward the wing side where supreme was and then if we go away from that side they just set up crazy charge defense where you can you've seen already cooks run into some charges like in problems like that uh already pretty much throughout this whole game now like i said our our game plan on offense and now right here we're getting bailed out with free throws at actually toward the end of this quarter we only got i think four shots or five shots up this entire quarter but they were able to give us like literally four possessions of free throws just freely um toward the end of this quarter but anyway to like i said describe the last of our offense and then i'll get to the defense because i really want to get this out of the way before we get too deep into the video but offense four out one in pick and roll me and cook running running screens sometimes we run uh supreme on those wraps but you know from like wing to other wing but this game it was just so complicated we actually did that the game after this now if y'all want to see a rematch of this we already played the game like right after it we ran a best of three series with this if you want to see the rematch let me know we can go ahead and run that back and i'll just show that but hey you see Mr. 58 free throw, green and everything on this. <laughs> now, later in the game, I actually did struggle with that. But anyway, first quarter's over. Now, I got to talk about defense before we get too deep into this. Now, we were running a 3-2. I was responsible for drives like you're seeing right here. And we would just constantly run like a triangle of defense on rotations from that left side. So, like I said, we have me, Supreme, and Kitchen. The, so, Kitchen CB Chillin is the on-ball defender. And you're going to see when he gets beat, 
I drop to the paint. Now, right here, <laughs> you know, we're seeing Kobe uh, lacking a little bit and, you know, gives up the wing defense. I, this is the thing. We don't play a one-on-one-on-one-on-one-on-one defense, you know, in this five-out. We're not just going to let our point guard get toasted all game. We're running rotations. I'm dropping from corner. Wing drops to the corner. Ball defender drops to the wing. Great rotations, just easy as that. Now, Supreme is playing between defense is what I'll call it. So you see, he gets the nice solid contest on that right there. And I want to explain how premium that is. So what you're seeing us do through this video is I'm playing paint and I'm, I'm responsible for cooks, like, you know, right corner cuts, the right wing cuts, all that stuff. What we probably should have done is move Kobe to that left wing as well. But I don't know how y'all how feel about this, but the communication and like, cooperation you have from teammates sometimes can outweigh like what builds so me and supreme were just on point with this defense and i think my man was playing beautiful defense for being a pure sharp now if he could hop on a two-way sharp or something like that that'd probably be like crazy but look at this i mean we're running into so many charge walls and in the game after this we figure that out where if cook just drives and then i roll from the opposite side it turns it into a two-on-one with a big man i can get easy lobs we figured that out in the next game it just took us a little while but anyway you see right there wing cut and then corner is open from three that's the rotation we're trying to make at the end of the day i just didn't execute on some of these and get good blocks but defensively i just i really want to show you all this so i'm responsible for drives i want to explain the rotation passing wise so right there you see they pass to the corner off the drive that means and i know this is going to take a little bit of like mind you know brain work so just stick with me on this but when they pass to the corner off a drive when i have to drop down to the paint supreme commits to the corner and then kitchen tries to get back out to the wing now if they pass to the wing that means supreme has to and you see right there boom he nice rotations right there um so if they pass to the wing that means supreme has to fully commit to him and i have to fully commit to the corner so it's all just literally a, as simple as this and I'll, I'll make a quick little cut once we hit halftime but it's as simple as this I, Supreme is playing in between, and until the ball gets to that left side, where he's just playing halvesies, I'm playing paint. Now, if they pass to one of those guys, he has to fully commit to that one, and then the other guy in our rotation will fully commit to the other. So, once the ball gets to the left side, it's a full commit, everybody's just on a guy. Now, when the ball is at the top, that's where you're seeing a lot of halvesies between me playing the paint and the corner halvesies. You're seeing uh, Supreme play have these between the wing and the corner it's it's a beautiful thing and I, I just hope you guys see the outcome of it but anyway i'm gonna make a quick, uh, quick little cut toward this halftime and hope y'all enjoy the rest of the video 28 to 23 halftime we are three for seven from three but they're one for four so <laughs> it's honestly all coming together you know pretty pretty equally bad but honestly i want to credit it to great defense i want y'all to understand just because and you know i was second guessing making this video because i was like oh you know they're gonna see everybody's playing like trash quote unquote so it's just gonna look bad but i want to explain just because you shoot bad doesn't mean that you were playing bad on offense or you know what i mean it's just I'm just trying to say it's not a trash offense versus a trash defense. However, what we're doing right here is pretty trash. But um, but no, I do want to explain, like, just because a team's playing good defense doesn't mean that the offensive team is bad. It just means, you know, if we are both playing good defense, it's as simple as that. Now, I get the roll off that. They double team Cook. He shoots the shot. Still gets sort of open, but I got the free board off it, essentially. And I could have gone up with it, but it was a bit far away. Now, right there is exactly what I'm talking about, where... If I am responsible for the paint at all times, regardless, and Cook can just kind of play his own man. Now, I'm not going to lie. Cook Cook got caught, like, reaching in the cookie jar a little bit on that corner. You're going to see later in the video. You know, at some point, what, what I'm asking Cook to do is literally just be one-on-one -on -one responsible for his man. Don't ever help. That's my job with this stuff. And we'll work the rotations from that left side. We And honestly, what we should have done, like I said, is just put Supreme in that right wing so that he didn't really have to do any of that helping stuff. And Kobe, who's more mobile and has good, inter good interior defense and perimeter defense and just speed and all that stuff in general, could have been flying around on that left wing a lot more. But at the end of the day, it was still nice to have Kobe in that spot. Again, you see Kobe dropping on that. And then boom, this is what I was talking about earlier where Cook get gets caught kind of lacking a little bit and sort of like ball watching and just helping a little bit and those threes hurt quite a bit and if we can just you know i mean cook has no defensive badges it, honestly and i i want to say this too i don't want y'all like you know making fun of my dude too much i understand he didn't have a good game and he didn't really bring much to the table defensively either now i will say too we played these guys twice so if y'all really want to see a rematch let me know but boom that's the rotation i'm talking about so 
you see I drop on the wing cut and then supreme guard left corner. If any cut happens, I'm responsible for it. Now, if the corner cut from the right happens, that's when I just need people to be more uh, willing to like float around and kind of like free safety that thing in like football terms. You know, like Kitchen and Supreme need to both be like flying around on that left left corner to left wing and like top of the key ish and boom, we just rotate everybody around so I can help cook on the corner cuts. Because at the end of the day, he is six foot two with like no interior defense, no, you know, defensive badges. It's just a tough outcome. Now, right here, I thought he was going to throw something up. I was just playing for the rebound. If he could have thrown the lob any sooner, it would have been better as well. Now, right here, if they were going to run any pick and pop, that's where I was going to guard wing and supreme guard corner. Again, boom, you see corner cuts flirting around. Uh, wing cut. Now, Honestly, you can see by how slow they were playing the pace right there that they engineered that. They literally went for the wing cut and then corner dot so that they knew they would catch me lacking on the on the cut on like the cut defense and then they could maybe catch Supreme uh, with like a good dot to that corner and they they pull it. But anyway, speaking of cuts, we get a corner cut with Kitchen right there and one gets the gets the free throw to drop too with this weird freaking free throw uh release that he has I, I think he didn't even change it with this new player that he has so real quick too before we get into this uh heated fourth quarter i want to explain to y'all uh kitchen has a new build like a two-way sharp but it says two-way finisher um i don't know what the reason is behind that or how you can even make that happen but in case y'all don't know two-way finisher is literally like a play defender or pure lock title essentially so it's kind of crazy that he was able to make that happen now these guys had a little miscommunication going on right here couldn't get their people in the corner in the wing properly boom kitchen gets the body up on the drive i'm in there for some some help defense on the interior as well at the end of the day what we're doing on defense and you see boom i could have had a nice slip right there but honestly patience probably would have been good on that it's just i thought i had a good look so we we tried to get it but um not nah, what i will say though patience is key as far as those but um Actually, I forget what I was going to talk about. Dang it. <laughs> Sorry. Also, I know these pro-am these pro -am commentaries are very much so like more free flowing and don't have as much, you know, like script to it. So I'm just kind of kind of calling it as I see it and talking. But what I will say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Kitchen's new build, two-way finisher. And honestly, he was kind of BSing right here, but we do get a nice look off that for the, the wing three right there and he greens it. Now, the two-way finisher title, it's honestly very interesting because it's, it's more of a two-way uh, like a playmaking defender or like a, you know, it's more of like a pure lock title. So what that entices people to do more is probably help. But with having a defensive leader for anybody on the court, I would assume they would be able to see his shooting percentage and not just leave him open. As you can see, he's got two three pointers up to this point. But like I said, he made it to kind of entice people to leaving him open more possibly. And <laughs> it's kind of funny how a two-way sharp he was able to manage to get the two-way finisher now you guys know if you're with the channel kitchen is very big on those making like weird player titles that like have nothing to do with the actual player like he has a three-point playmaker with lock takeover and it's honestly kind of cool how he does it but anyway moving along we finally have the lead it's 40 to 36 at this point boom you see supreme fully commits on that corner now we're back to the rotations now that the ball is not on that left side it's a beautiful thing to see how this defense came full circle and just actually plays and this is one of our first games playing with this lineup and this team now right here we're on the transition i was expecting kobe to throw a lob again this is lack of chemistry that you're seeing right here a lot of the times the dudes that i'm playing with they know that now right here i brick both free throws bro you've seen i greened four in a row before that point maybe even six in a row i forget how many times i went to the line but I, was, I greened at least four in a row before that, and I actually have a really good timing on my free throws. Now, boom, this is what I'm talking about right here. You see Supreme was able to play, like, tremendous defense on that, and Kitchen was able to still get a hand in there as well from the from the wing, and, you know, like, drop from ball handler who drove to the wing, and I was able to help on the paint. It's just a beautiful outcome on that. Now, right here, you're going to see, boom, he's holding, he's holding this charge, right? And what we did right here is kind of the remedy that we, like, found on our offense the second time we played this guy these guys and again if you want to see that let me know but i'm probably just gonna only upload this one for now if y'all really want to see the rematch on this let me know for sure uh, we both kind of found better ways to score against each other moving along with this but i will say and you see boom i have to help cook on the drive great rotations from those two on the left it, it's just a beautiful thing to see his defense come full circle and I would love to play more pro-am moving forward, but I also don't want to get into tournaments if we don't have any way of practicing. 
essentially like this. This is a good team to scrimmage against with the five out, and they have great defense as well, and just a lot of stuff they brought to the table defensively. Boom. You see, I, I drop on that corner help. He still gets it. This is still a pretty tight game at this point, but what I will say is the way that the pace has gone for the scoring, it is a pretty comfortable lead at this point to have a seven a seven point lead but you never know with the defense that these guys play i mean look at this this is so tough to beat with this like two three zone that they have and it's so it's so tough to get <laughs> it's so tough to get cook open unless i screen and then if i do screen they can just hedge really hard with that very mobile dude on the backside. I'm try I'm always trying to tell y'all that the the mobility from the backside is so much more important than the height, especially for 5v5 in my opinion. Now, you see, boom, full commit to that wing. Now that means I have to full commit to the corner. You see wing drive or cut means that Supreme's just going to let him do that and then I pick up and he picks up for me in the corner. It's great rotation and Supreme and me were just killing it with this communication and just being on the same page and I got to show my man big props for that dude was a pure sharp playing like the best defense on the team honestly <laughs> it was pretty crazy now again the whole defense relied on me supreme and kitchen to just be on point with our little triangle defense and good communication good understanding of each other and again that comes even more with like the more you play together now this is one thing i really wanted to mention right here so you see if, if you guys are with the channel, you know how this usually goes. They get the they get the bigger guy on Cook, and they're playing switch everything, as you've seen. What we normally do is run that back and slip it. I don't know what Cook's thought process was of, like, throwing it to me there. I I don't know. Maybe it's just, like I said, in the moment of, like, Team Pro-Am stuff, you get a little more, like, you know, psyched out and just, like, weird. You don't play your game, so to say. And I guess, I mean, it was a 10-point game at this point with a minute 30 left. It, this is basically as well as over. And right here, I just wanted to see your guys' opinion on this. It, they call me for a defensive three second right here. You know 2K. They don't be letting you play the one foot in, one foot out defense. <laughs> they, it's like it's like the middle of your circle is like what counts rather than like one of your feet. But anyway, end of the game. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, like I said, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed and want to see the rematch of this, let me know. But like I said, we can, if not, and you do want to see more Pro-Am videos, let me know that as well. But like I said, if you don't want to see the rematch of this, but more Pro-Am videos, still let me know. If you do want to see the rematch, let me know as well. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed. And if we can get this to like 500 likes, I'd appreciate that. Comment Pro-Am if you made it to the very end of the video. But other than that, hope you all enjoyed. Take it easy, man. Peace.